Uh, here we have my RC Marts RCX RS 1407 motors, 3400 kV and 4100 kV. These were sent in by my RC Mart. Uh, so thanks for sending them for testing so I can put them through the usual test and share the results with you guys. So they, they come in these uh, Ziploc bags and uh, they just give you four M2 mounting screws and it seems like it's an aluminum lock nut. Yeah, it's aluminum lock nut. So pretty, you know, pretty uh, economical way of uh, shipping them, uh, which is good. Keeps the prices low. And as we all know, these motors have uh, become popular because of their price and uh, performance. So they have a very good price performance ratio. A lot of times they equal or outpace some of the more uh, expensive motors. So that's pretty good. They've incorporated a lot of the features that other premium motors have. For instance, they mentioned that these are made out of 70-75 aluminum alloy, so that's that's supposed to be a stronger aluminum. Magnets, they list them as N52 SH magnets. Uh, when I open it, I'll see if they're curved, uh, but I mentioned before that for this size, uh, curved magnets really don't uh, make sense because uh, they're so narrow that uh, any curvature it really doesn't come into play that much, I think. A single piece shaft, it's a M5 here, and a 2 millimeter solid shaft there, so it's only partially hollow. Only up to the point where it's where it reaches the just a little bit past the bell, actually, uh, right there where it transitions from from M5 to 2 millimeter motor shaft and the uh, wires as you can see they they come with uh, fairly long wires these are about 150 millimeters so that should be enough length to uh, uh, to use them with any of those uh, four-in-one ESCs so that's pretty good uh, let's make uh, stalling uh, a breeze so you don't have to splice any wires bearings are, uh, they list them as being ESO bearings, uh, Japanese bearings, and the uh, magnets, uh, N52SH magnets, and uh, 0.15 uh, steel laminations on the stator. So it's it's got a a lot of the latest features in the motor. So so all of those are supposed to help uh, in performance. So uh, we'll find out soon enough. So let's uh, look at uh, at them closely. I'll pull this apart. Uh, these do have a um, 4100. These do come with uh, C clip, E clip, whatever these are called, uh, which are pretty easy to remove. Uh, these are the easiest clips to remove actually. Alright, so let's... Uh, uh, I took that out already. It's pretty easy to take out. Uh, so it's pretty easy to pull it out and just one thing I wanted to show uh, the bearings are uh, they're pressed in uh, pretty good so they'll, they'll come out they'll easily come out as you can see there so they just they'll just need a a, uh, a small push from the inside at an angle and they'll come out so that, uh, that's good you know they got pretty good tolerances they're they're just barely snugly fit there so that makes it makes it easy will make it easy to service this motor in the future if you ever need to change the bearings all right, let's look at it in the magnifying glass so you can just can get a closer look at the uh, at the stator and the wiring and all that stuff. Here's a closer look of the motor bell. So you can see a uh, pretty pretty good uh, thickness on the bell itself, so that should make it pretty sturdy. And uh, you can see some balancing mud there, so you know it's been dynamically balanced. Magnets look okay, just normal magnets. Uh, these are N52. The stator windings, pretty neat. Uh, nice windings. Uh, these are some of the neater windings I've seen from RCX motors. Uh, there's the uh, laminations, 0.15 millimeter. And let's uh, measure the stator. Uh, should be 7 millimeters. 
and yeah, that's uh, 70 meters nominal, so uh, no surprises there. Uh, so pretty, pretty good quality on the uh, on the finish of the motor. Certainly looks a uh, certainly looks pretty good. Uh, there it goes. The and that was the bearing that flew out. As you can see, it's pretty uh, comes out pretty easy. So, but it 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 does fit snug enough, so there's no play. So that's uh, actually a good thing. But you do have to be careful <laughs> when you reassemble it because it does it does pop out quite easily. At least on this motor, uh, I don't know how the other ones are. Uh, so now let's uh, find that bearing and I'll weigh this motor. All right, so bearing goes in pretty easy to pop in. And uh, let's see what it weighs. This is what the 150 millimeter length of wires. So you'll do some, you know, it'll lose some weight if you trim them. So that's about 17.3 grams on my scale. 17.3, 17.4. So somewhere around there. Not uh, not the lightest, but uh, it's not overly heavy. Um, it's not too bad, I guess, uh, for the price. I guess most of uh, the other premium motors are 14 and a half to 15 and a half. Uh, so this one's about one and a half to two grams heavier. But uh, I I don't I don't know if that's gonna make a difference. Uh, that much uh, carrying an extra gram or two. Uh, I guess for some people it will, but uh, for the price you can't you know, can't really beat the price on these uh, motors. Uh, so let's see what they make on the thrust stand. Um, I I'm really curious to see how they how they compare with the other motors. Uh. So onto the thrusters. Alright, so here we have the thrust results for the RCX RS1407 3400KV motor. Uh, this one actually measure slightly higher at uh, 3470KV, so just a little bit higher according to my thrust time. 
Uh, so pretty pretty decent numbers, pretty good numbers here on three inch blades. The higher performing uh, prop is the uh, Lumineer 3040 by three. Uh, so we're getting 530 grams of thrust. One thing I do want to mention is that uh, it's been hot here in Southern California. So as we all know, uh, propeller thrust is uh, dependent on on weather. So depending on air temperature, density, basically barometric pe pressure, there's going to be a difference in thrust. Uh, the hotter it is, the less thrust you get because the, de the less dense the air is, so less air molecules in, uh, floating in the air. So I did run the Brother Hobby as a, as a benchmark. On the Genfan 4045, it uh, made about 20 grams uh, lower thrust. Keeping that in mind, I think if I had tested this under the same conditions as when I initially ran the Brother Hobby, the numbers would be slightly higher because you know air is gonna be much denser than what it was at the time I ran this test. It's been hot here in California, so so just wanted to clear that out, and um, you know it's something to keep in mind. And uh, so let's look at the, let's continue to look at the the numbers here. So as we move up on the on the blades, uh, of course, uh, the uh, next one is the uh, the 4045, uh, one of the best matching props for these size motors around 681 slightly higher if we were at the uh, lower temperature and uh, one thing I'm, I'm I am noticing this motor is pretty pretty efficient it's not it's pulling a pretty decent amount of amps uh, nothing really too concerning about the uh, amp uh, draw here and uh, then uh, these uh, other two props, the four inch tri blades, the TJ4045 and the T4045. So, as we can see, uh, I think this size motor, um, what I'm noticing is uh, blades that have uh, a gentler airfoil profile do much better, at least on the static thrust test. In the air, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how, like, I haven't flown the, these two, so it's something to check, you know. But I, I would think the gentler blade profiles would would uh, spin up uh, faster because simply because these motors, due to their small size, they don't have a lot of uh, torque to uh, to get the the high pitch blades spinning, you know, going from low to high RPM quickly. Uh, so the the lower pitch blades seem to seem to do much better with these uh, size motors. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, similar similar pitch, but actually this 4045, this T4045 has a gentler, wider blade profile, so it seems to move smoother through the air, and uh, so it spins uh, at a higher RPM, and we end up with uh, higher thrust uh, as a result, and uh, almost the same amount of, uh, of amps and then we go on to the 5030 prop uh, which a lot of people are using these motors to run super ultra light uh, quads and pretty respectable amount of thrust here 904 grams so that's uh, that really shows this, this motors capability it's got pretty good amount of, uh, of torque I think to drive this prop at these thrust figures here. On 3S this is also does pretty well 680 grams and these other ones also not too bad uh, on 3S and I was thinking about this thing I just said about the pitch on the blade uh, so I thought I'd, I'd try the Gen Fan 5040 which is pretty much the same shape as the 5030 but it's got a steeper pitch. So intuitively, one would think uh, that this would make a little bit more thrust, but uh, the reverse happened. As you can see here, we ended up with uh, lower thrust and higher amps. So inadvertently, we've, uh, I think we've uh, bumped into the crest of the hill, you know. So once we get to 530 and we go to any bigger prop, any larger prop, then it's all downhill. Uh, we're not seeing any any better results at least at least on the static thrust uh, test as far as that's concerned uh, in dynamic uh, application uh, once you're flying uh, I 
can't say you know it could be that the 50 port 40 prop uh, uh, at the uh, what once it's under load between these two it could be that this may do better I'm not sure but uh, here are the numbers uh, as you can see for each of these uh, thrust uh, levels at 300 the 5040 is always using slightly more amps so that kind of tells you something right uh, I would think the 5040 would be the, the better prop to use uh, it, it seems like it would reach a target uh, thrust uh, faster than the 5040 uh, but uh, some people just prefer one blade over the other uh, it could be that the 5040 just feels more locked in and more responsive so that's something you know that's something you you gotta try on your own and depends on your on your build uh, but there you go that's uh, the thrust results for this motor from my rc mart uh, some pretty good numbers here and uh, considering the price a uh, pretty pretty good performance for the price uh, now uh, we just have to see how uh, durable they are as soon as people start buying them and abusing them uh, let's let's see how how good these motors uh, turn out to be uh, hopefully they they're pretty resilient middle motors uh, because they, they're showing to be pretty pretty good performance I think all right uh, thanks for watching and uh, until the next one uh, I should have the 4100 kV uh, results uh, up in a few days I got a uh, quite a few motors to test so keep uh, checking on the channel I'll be uploading videos as soon as possible thanks for watching